Gregory Keane is here, turning the next page of The Dossier on Demetrius. The dossier on the man with the unlikely name was growing every day, but it still didn't tell us much about him personally. That we hoped would be forthcoming pretty soon, because I'd finally managed to get some sense out of Digby Mitchell. He and Ridgeway had been running their own show and getting Ridgeway almost killed in the process, but they had turned the spotlight on Hady Bergner. When I say they, I mean Mitchell. After that affair down in the Hyde Park underground, Cuts and I buttonholed Mitchell on his way home early in the morning, with the intention of finding out from him where Ridgeway was hiding. He didn't tell us, but he brought us up to date on one or two other angles. And it didn't look too good for Miss Bergner. Oh, now I've given you enough information to keep you busy for a while. Do you mind if I get myself some sleep? You uh, still haven't told us where to find your chum, Ridgeway. That's right. There hasn't much to be scared of. Now let's have it. Nothing doing. You're only going to make it tough for yourself, old man. Mm, I can take it. Showing you how a Bergner could be working for Demetrius doesn't make any difference to Pete Ridgway being found with that knife in his hand. The Americans stabbed dead in the same room. I agree with you there, but that's a police inquiry. I want Ridgway for the help he can give me in running Demetrius to work. And I'm not telling you where to find Ridgway till he's cleared of Godovsky's murder. <sighs> how the devil's he ever going to clear himself of anything, running about like a headless hen getting himself pushed under trains? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put it up to the chap himself. What would you do in Ridgway's shoes? I'd be along to the embankment, I think. But another slug of that whiskey of yours. Hmm. Well, you're not quite so much of an arrant fool as I took you for. Listen, Keen, are you more expensive to clip than any ordinary copper? Hold it, Cuts. That's a bit childish, don't you think, Mitchell? You ask me sometime when you haven't got your personal goon around. Mitchell, Cuts is not a goon. Then what is he? What do you do every time he stops someone hanging one on you? Throw him a fish? Drive him back to his hotel, Cuts, and then pick me up here again. I'll save you the trouble. Plenty of cabs about. Well, that'll suit us fine. The door handle pulls upwards to open. Thanks. I'd expect to see Ridgeway at the embankment within 24 hours. I told you. That'll depend on Ridgeway. Well, in that case, you might mention to him that you'll be arrested if he doesn't appear. That's all. Good night. Going to arrest me, eh? Oh, yeah? Where's he going to find me? Lady, I've tried to explain to you 50 times. When engaged in enterprises such as ours, you must always secure your line of retreat. Well, I don't like it. If that clumsy butcher Yachty hadn't fumbled in the underground last night, it wouldn't be necessary. But it is necessary. Ridgeway's alive. You must now be certain that you're in some way involved with us. And if Keane catches up with him before we do... You're going to be under suspicion. But what can they do? Nothing. It's not a crime to ask an American for his address. It's not a crime to uh, meet Ridgeway in the tube. But as for the actual place of meeting, you can always say Ridgeway was wrong. The meeting was to have been at Gloucester Road. That's all completely beside the point. Once Keane begins to suspect you, you'll be out on the sidelines. And I need you. You're vital to me. Hence tonight. Whose car are you using? Bookman's. Bookman will report it stolen at about three o'clock in the morning, when I've finished with it. We'd better not bungle it again. Well, there won't be any bungling. This time I'm handling it myself. What about Tony Mazzotti? Has he given you anything to go on yet? Not yet. But I don't expect we'll have much trouble finding uh, out who let Ridgeway into the club. What happens when you do know who it was? Well, we can't have people making such terrible nuisances of themselves. We really can't. I imagine Mazzotti will attend to... Ten minutes with those two thugs of his in a dark lane, I suppose. Mm, something like that. Mazzotti's coming here tonight after we've completed tonight's work and he's closed the club. You won't lose your nerve, will you? Have I ever? Mm. I'll be there in Bookman's car from uh, 220 onwards. If the fellow on guard outside your flat gets inquisitive, it'll be just too bad for him. But if you have to call it off, I'll signal you when you arrive by flicking my lights. Now, are you sure you understand exactly what to do? I know what to do. Yes. <laughs> I doubt very much if we'll have any trouble with Gregory Keane after tonight. Hadn't you better be on your way to the Red Feathers? I expect so. Till later, then. Till twenty minutes past two tonight.
Are you Tony Marzotti? Are you sure that's me? That's your office in there? What do you want? I'll tell you inside. Lead the way, will you? Righto, Cuts. Now, who do you think you are, eh? My name's Keen, Major Gregory Keen. Major Keen. <laughs> Major Keen, it's too bad. I don't think we met. Eh? Well, I shouldn't let that cost you any sleep, Marzotti. Who are these two characters? Oh, those are two of my boys. That one's a Frankie Cal. These one's a jelly boy. <laughs> He's kind of fat, you know. We call him jelly boy. Mm hmm. Get them out of here. Maybe you gentlemen like to get them out of here for me, huh? What about that, Cuts? Just say the word, Major. Now, look, Marzotti, why don't you be sensible? We don't want to wreck your place. Well, okay. You boys are well outside, huh? And you won't mind if Cuts keep them company, will you? That's right. Mind if I sit down? Now then, let's get down to business, Marzotti. If I were a friend of yours, which you have to admit is not very likely, I could get dope from you, couldn't I? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, never mind. I'm not particularly interested. I leave that sort of thing to the yard and the narcotics people. <laughs> How's the body you telling me what do you want, eh? Do you know a fellow called Ridgeway? A guy that stabs that, that yank a week before last? Hey, you try to be funny, eh? You have a girl here called Haley Bergner. Uh-huh. So what? She's a same good? A couple of nights ago, someone let Ridgeway into Miss Bergner's dressing room. Who? Oh, if that's all you want to know, why don't you say so? I'm telling you, that's something I like to know, too. You didn't let him in yourself, did you? <laughs> Listen, Major King, I'm going to need a good comedian for my floor show. You want a job, maybe, eh? Well, if you'd rather, Marzotti, I can ask these questions in the little basement room I know. Now then, let's have a straight answer. Sure, all right. This guy Ridgeway gets in. I, I don't know how. But if I find how, there's someone gonna be get roughed up a little, see? I run a good club, drinks, few girls, good music, dancing. I don't know nothing else. Nothing, you understand? Mm-hmm. You'll run the good club. All right, Masati, that'll do for now. But if anyone else tries getting in here up the back stairs, let me know. Because, Marzotti, if you don't, do you know what'll happen to you? <laughs> What's it happen to me, huh? I can make it pretty tough on aliens. Now, be a good chap. Bear that in mind. Yeah, sure, sure. I'll bear it in mind. Where's Miss Bergner now? She's downstairs, just to finish singing. I'd like a few minutes with her. Get me a table and ask her to join me, will you? Sure, sure. I'll ring downstairs. You want something? It's on the house. <laughs> for guys like you, Major King, everything's for free. You're too kind. I wanted there would have talked to the boss about that guy. Maybe he's a meeting with a little accident, eh? Mazzotti. I'm one of the boss, eh? Wait a minute. What is it, Mazzotti? And these are guy Keen's here, boss. He's acting tough about how Ridgeway we gets into the club. Now he's down with Harry. Uh, what if he wants to drive home, eh? Can you pass the word to Hede almost at once? Why, sure, sure. That can be arranged. This is important, Mazzotti. Head is on no account to ask Keen to drive her to the flat herself. She mustn't even suggest it, understand? But if Keen offers, that's different. Well, Hedy. Well, Keen. I've been talking to your Italian friend, Marzotti. He's no friend of mine. Isn't he? Do you know a man called Digby Mitchell? No, oh, I've never heard of him. Why should I? Who's Digby Mitchell? He's a very good, very close friend of Peter Ridgway's. 
And he was also the fifth man on that plane that brought you from Berlin. And so what? What's the matter with you tonight, Keen? Aren't we friends anymore? Early this morning, I had a long talk with Digby Mitchell. I don't care who you had a long talk with early this morning or any other time. What are you driving at? Uh, can I intrude a please, Miss Bergner? Uh, you give me a minute, eh? What is it, Tony? And the guys in the band. The arrangement for your last number. There's a change they want to make, you know? Would you excuse me, Keen, just for a moment? Go ahead. What is it, Tony? A word from Demetrius. Keen don't know it, but uh, coming here tonight, he's a making it twice so easy for us, see? Tonight? <laughs> he's going to be taken for a little ride, eh? Now listen, Harry. I didn't think for a moment that Marzotti wanted to talk to Hedy about the arrangement of her song. But just the same, I walked into their little scheme for that night with my eyes wide open. You know, I had to hand it to those people. They were good. And within the next hour and a half, I learned firsthand just how good they were. What are Demetrius and Mazzotti planning for Gregory Keane? Listen to the next suspenseful chapter of Dossier on Demetrius. Mm-hmm.